Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the September 9th, 2020 uh, Board of Trustees for Delhi Township. In a moment, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we will have a moment of silence. Our moment of silence, wow, where do you start? I think the moment of silence should go out to this country. Uh, in my thoughts and in my opinion, we have a divided nation, and it's a good time to remember, especially on a night like tonight, we are the United States of America, united. You know, we're all here together. And uh, some of the things you see going on as we approach November and everything, I think we need a country that needs prayers. We need to have a country that uh, need to be nice to each other, for lack of other words, and uh, just to always be respectful. And uh, so please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for those here in attendance tonight. It's a nice packed house. It's always good to see that. And for those that are watching at home, uh, greetings. Welcome here on this uh, Wednesday night, September 9, 2020. We have approval of the minutes, please. Motion to approve the minutes from the Board of Trustees meeting held on August 26, 2020, and dispense with the reading. So moved. Second. All in favor? Yes. 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 Motion approved. Motion to approve the payment of overtime for pay period ending August 25th, 2020. So moved. Second. All in favor? Yes. 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 Motion approved. Motion to approve bills for payment. So moved. Second. All in favor? Yes. 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 Motion approved. Report from the fiscal officer, Mr. Luby. Resolution 2020-167, resolution amending appropriations for expenses, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Is there any other discussion on this resolution? I can tell you what it's for if you'd like. Okay. Sure. So we bid out the demolition for the former Remke building. So this is moving the money into the fund uh, to be able to contract with O'Rourke, which is coming up later on the agenda. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2020-168, resolution authorizing the township administrator to spend greater than $10,000 on behalf of the township, declaring emergency and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Is there any discussion on this resolution? I could tell you these are for the project, for the mixed use project we're working on. One is for uh, the first step in schematic design for Brandstetter, Carroll, and Elevar. These, this money is coming out of our reimbursable fund that once we would go forward with the project and issue um, a bond, we could reimburse ourselves these expenses. So the one is for Brandstetter Carroll, and the other is for Midtown Health, who's going to work with us through the design and until the facility would open on, on what we would need from their end. Very good. Any other discussion? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Trustee Correspondence, Trustee Sturtz? Um, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, getting a couple calls and noticing some sign placement around town, um, mostly political signs and things of that sort, There, there is... Um, some rules around that in Delhi, which is not to put them in the right-of-way. Right-of-way being between the street and the sidewalks. Um, and people say, well, I have to mow that and so on and so forth. Um, yes, you're right, you do. But what it ends up being is like traffic clutter. You know, your eyes are drawn away to it, or it could be blocking the, um, the vision of cars 
in going in and out of driveways or just driving in general, so on and so forth. So it is not allowed. And I do know that once in a while, the township will sweep those signs. Um, have we done a sweep yet, Mr. DeLong? There's been a couple sweeps or, you know. We pull signs every day. Every day they're pulling signs. So be, be loud and proud if you like with your signs, but please keep them in your yard on the other side of the sidewalk. If you don't have a sidewalk, it has to be on the other side of what, the telephone poles, where the telephone poles or the sidewalk would be. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. It is the utility poles if there's no sidewalk. And another reason why it's important to keep them out of there is we do not know what underlying utilities are running through there. And it is a safety issue. You could hit something, a fiber optic line or something that you're unaware of that is down there. So Three good reasons. There thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Dong. And thank you to our citizens who are on our Delhi Media um, uh, different ventures and are trying to educate the people because they know. So um, thank you. And um, um, just, just want to put that out there because I am getting calls and I'm sure the other two are getting calls also and inquiries. So thank you very much. Yeah, good. Trustee CV. Uh, I have three items tonight. The first is uh, just a quick review of the We Thrive meeting from last week. It was great attendance. And we have finalized mm -hmm. the uh, comprehensive community health assessment will be on October the 20th and it will be at the Senior Center. Now what will be unique is that it will be both an in-person opportunity with social distancing and, and mask and it will also be zoomed. So that's October the 20th and again they reiterated to us that our township came up with the most responses to the questionnaire of any township in Hamilton County. So thank you all for your participation. Trustee Seavey, what time is that? I'm sorry. I, I, I think right now it's going to be 630. Thank you. Yeah, but I will uh, put a post down on it eventually and also include the Zoom information. Um, there was also from those questionnaires a question from a Samantha Miller about the turtles and the ducks in Clearview Lake. And apparently I haven't seen it, but I've heard um, turtles and ducks get caught in the hooks and get caught in the line. Is that correct, Randy? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, it's, you know, we don't want to harm any of the wildlife in Clearview. We're, we're very pleased with the fact that the rules are fishing is on Friday. And I'd say we're pretty good at obeying those rules as well. Fishing is on Friday. So. I looked into the Ohio Department of Natural Resources to find some information about ducks and turtles, and we will be looking into posting some type of direction for our fishing people on what to do if they happen to hook either a turtle or a duck is caught in the line. So Samantha, thank you for your concern on that, and um, we'll be looking into putting up some type of direction for the people using the lake. And third, there's been a lot of chatter regarding um, our last meeting and the nuisances. And I just, I want everyone to understand that it is my intent to address nuisance properties for safety, for health, and for general appearances. The process is very methodical and is the same for everyone. This, product, this process is actually set by Ohio Revised Code. It's not a township law. There are no township laws. To date, we have 849 nuisance and zoning complaints. This number does not include the number of people that may have called on the same complaint. So we actually had 849 actual incidents. It is not my intent to shame or embarrass anyone. And I am so sorry if anyone has felt that it was. But I also respect those people who take the time and the interest to call about a possible nuisance or zoning um, problem. And I will along with the community development team, see them through. Look, Delhi is building a momentum in our economic development. We want to always put our best foot forward. We never know when a developer or an investor in Delhi Township 
could be coming through our township. Property maintenance often is their first impression. So 849, whatever it takes to give us our best foot forward. Look, I grew up here, I live here, I love the people here, and what I want is the best for everyone. So um, sorry for any misunderstanding on what was said, but it's all with passion to get the township clean and ready for development and investors as well as each other. That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to add to that a little bit, um, and I know we're talking in reference to um, a meeting past. Um, part of the, the opening uh, moment of silence, we talked about just being a kinder, gentler nation, if you wouldn't being nice to each other. That thought popped in my mind, and um, basically there was a property that came through, and, and when we do these nuisance uh, things, these resolutions, I have to tell you, this is the worst part of the meeting for your trustees. We all don't like having to point out other people's properties, I can assure you. But when we're approaching 850, which already is over the number we had in 2019 altogether, and we're still looking at over, what, three and a half months to go, it is frustrating. It's frustrating for the residents that take care of their properties. It's frustrating for us to have to go out and do it. I apologize because it just becomes so frustrating that at the last meeting, I think my direct quote was, please cut your grass, take care of your roof, you know, uh, bring your garbage in, leave your mattresses inside, whatever it was, it's not meant to insult or hurt anyone's feelings. So when that was said, um, I saw something on social media and got to talk with the resident the next day, and it was a good talk, and I really appreciated that. Um, so hopefully that, that clears the air a little bit to realize, you know, none of us come in harm at all we come to have things cleaned up which is why when a property is reported and we have no choice but to look into it um, and 99.999 percent it's your next door neighbor or the person that lives behind you that turns you in it's not something where we're just seeking to try and make your life miserable which is why we send out an informal letter in the first place so it doesn't have to come before the board and if there's something there along the way that you didn't get the letter, the person living there or the homeowner, um, we do a follow-up letter and actually inspect the property the day of the trustee meeting before we declare it a nuisance. So there are some check balance systems going on there. Um, if it's a hardship case or there's something going on, because we don't know, when the thing comes up to us, we have no idea who the resident is. All we see is the house and what the, the violation is, whether it's cars, tires, garbage sitting out, stuff piled up that draws rodents, rats, and everything else you can dream of, um, we have to act on that. Uh, we don't have a choice. Uh, so when we see it, we act accordingly. It's completely objective. We don't know what your situation is, but we have had people reach out. I know with the CARE program, with the fire, and these other areas, I don't think, and maybe it's not because I'm a trustee, I don't think you could find the department heads, employees of a township, your elected officials, administration, who would not be willing to work with you in whatever your situation is. This is probably one of the most caring, giving communities you could live in. So when somebody says something like, oh, they don't care, the trustees don't care about us, it's ridiculous. We are a, an extremely loving community, and we are there to help. If you don't believe it, you can find that resident and look at all the people that came to her aid willing to help her get her stuff moved. That's the community we live in. That's why, Cheryl, you've lived here all your life. You've there, How many years? We've all invested into this township. I've lived here my entire life. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. We're not perfect, I can tell you that, but we do care. And if there's something going on with your property and you can't take care, let us know. Greg, am I wrong? Do we work with, with absolutely every day? So I am sorry. None of us mean to be crass or anything, but we're approaching 900 of these. That's ridiculous. We all want our property values soaring. We all want to protect where we live. That's the bottom line. Nobody means any harm. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, is this a good time to have Mr. DeLong go through the formal that's, process and that explain? Is, yeah, that's is that the further next, down? Okay. 
Yep, that's the next thing I have. We've asked Mr. DeLong to kind of take three to five minutes to just walk through the process for those that are watching, and I know that there's many watching right now, to just explain the process so, so people do understand it. And uh, again, not to belabor it, but just so we're all on the same page. And like I said, by the time it comes to us, nobody wants it to be here for us, which is why you check the day of the meeting. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah, as Trustee Seavey said, what we follow is in the Ohio Revised Code. Um, there's kind of two things that go on with our department. We have nuisances and we also have zoning. The nuisance is passed by the trustees. It was resolution 2017-304. It breaks it out step by step what we're supposed to do. And nuisances fall under dangerous structures, debris, excessive vegetation, and junk motor vehicles. Those are the only items that come before the trustees. Everything else, parking in your yard, trailers, boats, campers, those are actually citable to court. So that's another avenue we don't like to go down either. The process is pretty simple. We get a complaint, our inspector goes out, and tries to engage with the property owner the best we can. We understand we are you know, out and about during working hours. Um, if he is unable to make contact with the property owner, we do leave a card at the house for them to call us. Usually we have pretty good success with that. So, and then if the violation is there, we send an informal order. We give them a time frame to get the issue resolved. Now, we do get calls from people. They'll ask for an extension. We are, we'll work with them the best we can, but we also need to understand that the neighbors around them are being impacted. So we try not to go too far with our extensions because it is negatively impacting the adjacent property owners. If the issue is not resolved within the time window that we have established, then we go on ahead and bring it in front of the trustees. And that's the part we don't like to do, but unfortunately we have to do it. That is what we're required to do. Thereafter, after we get the decision from the trustees, we post the property. We also send a letter with the resolution from the trustees meeting, first class and certified to both the property owner and tenant. They still have an additional window of time to get the property addressed. And then if it's not addressed within that window, then we will come in and do what we need to do by abating the property, either mowing the grass, removing the debris, things like that. So that is a quick synopsis of the process. Um, as Trustee Seavey said, it's very methodical. Um, you know, it really depends on your meeting schedule. Um, like this month, we're actually have an extra week. So some of these complaints that are coming early this month, unfortunately, the neighbors have to wait a little bit longer because we have five Wednesdays this month. So the, typically, if we get a complaint, we do inform the complainant that it is about a four to six week process for us. So it is pretty timely. And unfortunately, we also tell them it's not set by us, it's set by the Ohio, you know, state of Ohio. So it is pretty timely. Now we do follow the similar process for our zoning complaints, which are the ones that we cite to court. The only difference with that is it does not come to you guys. We again send an informal order. Then we send a formal order if it's not resolved. And then we partner with the police department because they have the citation authority. We don't as staff and we will go give them a final warning. Usually that works when they have a cop show up at their house. And then if it's still not resolved, then we will cite them to court. I've been here almost five years. We've had one citation to court so far. So it does work, you know, people do cooperate. So, but that is just a quick synopsis of it. I encourage the public, if they have more questions, to give us a call at the Department of Community Development and 922-2705. We're more than happy to explain it in more detail with them. I think the issue came up with this resident. It wasn't so much our, our protocol or anything like that. She said we didn't get the letter. So they didn't get the letter. They felt like the homeowner didn't get the letter. And again, I know you've heard that before along, we along the that journey. We hear almost every complaint we get. So. Right, yeah. And, and well, we again, never get return letters back, so they're, they're somewhere. So. Yeah, and talking with her, basically, she found out from someone that lives on the, on the street across from her saying, oh, you know, just saw your property. So it sounds like a bad situation like that, but there are other things that happen so it's not just that one letter there is a follow-up letter and cool. there is someone that goes out and does try to make contact which we appreciate and uh thanks greg i yeah, appreciate and, that and unfortunately we did hit 850 this afternoon so we, there you go. we're up one more and you know we have a very minimal staff and we have one guy that's pretty much out doing all of this and i have to really thank nathan for his hard work he's only been here oh my gosh 10 months and he is busting his bottom being out there it is a lot and it takes time especially if you're interacting with the public and you have 30 or 40 inspections to do a day driving around and trying to spend time with the public explaining the rules it takes you know a it's, it's a lot of work so but we do appreciate his hard work and everything else and we appreciate your guys' support yeah 
And again, I appreciate the homeowner talking, and and <clears throat> I think it's a good ending. You know, we we've, we've learned a little bit, and I think every, the community's learned, and we'll continue on. Um, like I said, that's what dialogue's about. And something coming up in the township, let us know. Let us know. Doesn't have to go to social media <laughs> everywhere else, but um, we're all on the same page. We all live here. So thank you so much, and I appreciate that. Let's move on, please. Um, uh, let's go to public uh, works. We have a public hearing, please. Motion to, public, to open the public hearing for 2020 road repair contract with regards to assessments of the cost of sidewalks, including that portion of a driveway within the sidewalk easement and driveway aprons as part of the curb improvement against the budding property owners. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion is approved. Mr. Ripperture, Public Works. Thank you, trustees. This public hearing is to notify the residents of the final assessment to the abutting properties for sidewalk and apron repairs completed in 2020. The resolution that follows gives Delhi Township the ability to send out the final assessment amount to the property owners and allows additional time to pay the outstanding amount before the assessment is sent to the county auditor. We have probably talked to close to 100 residents. I think answered all the questions. Um, I don't foresee anyone showing up, but I would like to just send out a thank you to the resident and the uh, contractor, R.A. Miller. It was a it was a definitely a good year for the road contract. The weather was good. I think there was a little extra cars on the street, but uh, the residents were great to work with with that. Um, it actually started, I don't know if you can see the picture, but a little bit of a chain reaction where the residents um, hired their own contractors to do some of the driveways. So that's like a small cul-de-sac with about 10 houses there, and I believe six of them had all their aprons and uh, a lot of their sidewalk. The driveway up to the garage all got repaired, so it really looked good, and uh, that was throughout the subdivision during the project. So it really looks good. Picture looks great. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks. It does look nice. And uh, and again, only because I know we we're aware of one of those situations where someone went off the board and hired somebody else in. Oh yeah. Careful what you do, and then we're not telling you what to do. But careful when someone comes in saying, "Oh, I can do it for this price." Make sure you have everything in writing, pictures, everything, because that was not a pleasant situation, and the homeowner was literally out thousands of dollars. Where the person did have to work and just took off it's like yes. yeah and there's a lot of sharks like that out there unfortunately so yes we did a deal with that and i believe ra miller you know worked with the resident on that one also so they came right. counter back mm -hmm. and did it yeah there you go very good is there any other uh, public comment at all on this anyone okay motion please to close motion to, to close the public hearing for the 2020 road repair contract with regards to assessments of the costs so moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion approved. Very good. Public works, please. Resolution 2020-169, resolution ordering final assessment amounts against abutting property owners for the construction, repair, and maintenance of sidewalks and driveway apron improvements along various township streets. Order performed in connection with the Delhi Township Street Rehabilitation and Repair Project 2020A. Following notice and hearing, establishing payment terms for assessments in accordance with RC 5543.10 and its policy and procedures, declaring an emergency and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce me the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Discussion on this resolution. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. A fire department, Chief Campbell. Promotion. Motion to approve the promotion of Jeremy K. Nehe from career firefighter EMT to career firefighter paramedic at the rate per the collective bargaining agreement with the IAFF Local 3389, effective September 9th, 2020. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Congratulations, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah what are, congratulations. What are your thoughts there, Chief? Uh, my thoughts are, I wish we'd have the fanfare that we used to have, but uh, we'll have to make up for it later. No, Jeremy served with us for the last six years here in Delhi. Delhi resident growing up in, uh, raised in Delhi. Um, 
you know, last three years as a full-time EMT. So what we've seen is he's really developed, uh, sent himself through paramedic school, and really the richest reward is what we're going to get on the other side, a full career and using his skills as a paramedic here in Delhi to serve the people that, you know, basically he grew up in this community. So we're excited to see what he can do. Yeah, right. we're excited for him. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Parks and Recreation, please. Mr. Soupy. Uh, thank you, trustees. I didn't have anything on the agenda, but I wanted to add and bring the board up to speed on the uh, Senior Center reopening. Uh, I believe Mr. Dwine, or Governor, uh, Dwine said it would be okay to open on the 21st of this month. And we are going through um, something with their, the board of the seniors. We are in contact with uh, Vice President and a couple other board members. And um, we are possibly opening up with, require, with restrictions and requirements. They're following through with everything they're looking at. Uh, their board members all took on a part of a job to take on uh, thermometer checks, check-ins, sanitizing, uh, masks. And one of the big reasons is if you don't have a mask, you will not come in. That's what he has uh, proposed to, to all of us. Um, I think they have all their uh, ducks in a row right now, and me and my me and our crew have looked over all the requirements possible. We will come in uh, one time. I believe Jack, Mr. Cameron, had a, um, a 360 Clorox cleaner that we delivered. We come in after each event and clean up afterward and sanitize. Uh, we are working with um, all the regulations coming in and out. And I believe uh, Friday we have a meeting set up with a couple of the board members also. We're going to meet and go over and make sure everything is in order because the most important part is to keep everybody safe. Um, we don't want anybody getting sick. Uh, everything needs to be right. Uh, on top of every other aspect of it. That's the most important part. So we, I will follow up more with the information when it comes along, and we'll get it further on. So are we shooting for the 21st? Uh, 21st is a Monday. I'm working with, usually the senior center is closed at that point, and their group is, the board wants to meet before an event comes out to get everything in order, thermometers, everything working. So we, I believe we're gonna work on 21st and possibly have them come in maybe we're going to work over with the vice president uh, he's talking two days a week possibly so we can save on sanitizing uh, there's no way we can work with uh, the amount that they come in for four days a week so um, with that governor's mandate are you asking them to get tested on their own before uh, that is one of the issues we're going to go over um, he had contacted me and I believe he put in uh, DeWine had said that they need to be tested I don't know if that's if you have a um, a, a condition right now or if yeah, you're if testing a sickness so we're going to go over that on Friday as well we have the paperwork to look over and again this is going to be not this following Monday but the it's going to be the following Monday where they uh, can possibly come in but as soon, if we see something not appropriate uh, it will go out that it has to be changed and we'll uh, we'll hold it back for sure yeah so Randy what's the status of the lodge uh, on that part the lodge and senior center itself the seniors are in a group uh, we, as we were talking, the senior center is not a center for it. They're just a group that comes to the senior center and community center that uses it. So uh, they are they are not renting. They're just using in their, their usual circumstances. Uh, the lodge we're working on uh, on rentals. That would be a future uh, a future event we have to talk about. Okay. As of right now, they are not open. Okay. Uh, not, the major reason is for sanitizing and cleaning purposes and staffing it's just everything is double triple right now so it's hard to keep up with it hmm. Hmm. trustee stewart anything on um no i mean I, I know we're talking about just seniors you know right now that we're dealing with but then you know there's other organizations that are always looking to want to yeah. use you know especially the ones that aren't paying and stuff yeah, yeah. We'll have so to i mean this is a whole that. conversation that has to be held with that's us that's true yes with all of us okay across the board yes and okay. decide. people keep asking so you yeah, know it's, it's asking different. every day we we are in contact with everyone that had previous uh reservations and we let them know weekly at this point mm -hmm. It was monthly because it was no no word on anything. So now it is uh, down to weekly. Uh, we are not taking new reservations at the time, but uh, hopefully that'll change. I think one of the things that Mr. Soupy and I have talked about, we 
ordered and got in a sanitizing machine, which I used up here, Karen. Um, <laughs> so this works pretty quickly and easily. The problem is the chemicals are limited on how much you can get. I've ordered another one that will be here in 10 weeks. Um, so they've started, they can use that. And one of the things we need to sit down and do is look at, okay, how many reservations are there? How much chemical do we think we're going to expend to make sure that the area is safe? And to the other groups that actually don't pay for the use of the space, how do they fit into the mix if we've got a limited amount of ability to keep, keep the area clean and safe? I think that's one of the things we have to factor in. And, you know, the, the staff time is mm -hmm. something we have to consider. Do we know yet on the um, <clears throat> COVID account, obviously the sanitizer and the chemicals are covered. What about the manpower hours needed to sanitize? Do we know if those are going to be covered by the COVID amounts? Um, so I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to maybe talk about and let people understand. The state, I think the federal CARES money has come through the state and we've got several hundred thousand that we can keep if we can validate expenses related to COVID and the extra cost for material or manpower. So one of the things we have talked about, Mr. Supi and I, is, well, if people are willing to do overtime, we could clearly just defer that and, and claim that as a reimbursement. So that's one factor. We could, but if somebody's technically, if somebody's here eight hours and they're just deferred to, you know, cleaning a little bit extra, I'm not sure we can go that route because we are already okay. expecting them already to be here. Yeah, as of right now, we're so struggling keeping up. They'd so. have to either call somebody in or have somebody stay over to really claim it as a COVID related, you know, keep that money. But it could be, and I, th I think part of our challenge is. The custodians that we use to, to man events or, or woman events, they're a little bit older and they're not as comfortable being <laughs> in the environment too. So that's that's one of the challenges we have with with staffing the events. But okay. yeah, our our expect our hope is that we can have these open and people can be using them in in a safe way. We want to make sure they're safe too. Well, yeah, thanks, coming up, Randy, coming up on the busy season also. That that date, kinda helps. Right. <laughs> Randy, for the seniors, it would be like their business meeting and then their regular Wednesday day that they meet. So is that what they would be asking for? Uh, right now? We, we are going over Friday. Uh, I talked with the vice president also, and he mentioned, uh, not to get into too much, but he was saying that he doesn't know if their food vendor is available to even start for Wednesday. And I was applying that they would generally, naturally just use Wednesday as one of their days. But he said they might just do a Tuesday and a Thursday. So that's what we're going to go over and get okay. a schedule set. All right. Yes. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Police Department, please. Resolution 2020-170, resolution declaring certain police vehicles and equipment no longer needed for public use and authorizing the sale to the Hardin County, Ohio Board of Commissioners, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? Chief. <laughs> yeah, this is a relationship we've had for, I don't know, five or six, seven years now. Uh, they buy the vehicles from us sight unseen. The only thing different this year is it's a lot later in the year. You said they buy it sight unseen? Yeah, they don't look at them. Yeah, they I want you to look at my little Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. How much can we get for that sight exactly. unseen? Appreciate okay, yeah, Hardin County. Great. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. And thank you to the DCPA for the detailing of those vehicles. I understand they were out in the garage. What was that today? Yep. Well, thank right. you, Delhi Citizens Police. Amen. Yeah, nice. <clears throat> okay, administration, please. Resolution 2020-171, resolution entering into a contract with the Rourke Wrecking Company for the demolition of the building at 5025 Dye Pike, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion? I know we have uh, Michael Rourke is in the, the house here and also Michael Collins, right? Um, well, go separate. Ahead. I know separate, but I'm just introducing <laughs> our, our guest here that... <laughs> 
Um, go ahead, Mike. I'm Thank sorry. you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, yes, I just uh, told Mr. Cameron that I would be here to answer any questions that you may have. I know, uh, as Trustee Seavey said, Delhi has a lot of momentum. This is the first uh, phase of a big project, and, and the demolition kicks that off. So, um, you know, I was born and raised in Delhi. Our business started in Delhi on Mayhew. And uh, so it's an important project for, for me to get. I, I wanted to uh, do this project. We work all over the country and sometimes overseas. But, uh, you know, we're from, we're from Delhi. We're just a bunch of guys from Delhi. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, this is an important project for our company to get, me and me personally. So um, I have family still over here. So I wanted to come over, say hello to them, and after I visited with you all. So if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Um, it's a, from our standpoint, it's a fairly straightforward project. Um, you know, we're we're going to, assuming that you approve the award, we're going to secure the site with project fencing that you see on every construction site. Uh, we'll, once that is uh, done, we go for permit acquisition with the county, which normally takes about three to four weeks. We call for utility disconnects with Duke Energy, which typically takes four weeks. Um, you know, I'm old enough to say it's not CG&E anymore. <laughs> when we deal with Duke, we go on, a, we call the project in, it goes on a list. They could show up on day two or day 22. Um, that's just the way it works and it takes about four weeks to do that. Mr. Cameron has expressed the need to complete the project by the end of the year. And if that is the case, uh, it's gonna, the actual boots on the ground work is a 60 day work effort. So if, if we are gonna get complete by the end of the year, we need to uh, you know, get an approval so we can call in our disconnects, get our permit acquisition moving forward, and, and then um, we'll take this thing down like you've never seen. <laughs> we, yeah, we appreciate that. And I, I really appreciate that you, we've talked about this many times, you know, you, on Mayhew, you know the area, you know the township. And one of the things that I say, Delhi residents have waited a long, long time for this. You know, so you see something out there, we're saying, oh, if everything stays the same around here, not much longer. Um, it is going to continue on with the planning of the pike uh, that my fellow trustees have been working on hard for the last several years. So many things that uh, when you see it and it's going to come into fruition, heck, even taking down the property at Anderson Ferry and Delhi Pike, flip the neighborhood upside down going, awesome. We don't care if anything goes in there. It just looks nicer. Right. And that's the whole thing, creating energy up there, your main thoroughfare, getting a good pulse. So... Uh, well, and that's yeah. the beauty of the demolition business. It makes a statement. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, if the developer drives down Delhi Pike, he'll know that there's something happening. I mean, we're we're not very inconspicuous. Yeah. You know. Trustee Sturts, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yes, I'm, I really appreciate you laying out the time work here and the, the timing of everything. So when somebody says, oh, what's well, not going to take that long to take that thing down, you know, blah, blah, blah. So thank you for that to understand. And, and again, I, I don't know how many people heard it, but it, we have a grant to take this down. If we don't have it completed by the end of the year, we lose that money. So that's uh, 100, 135, Greg? 125 plus we had some other grant money too. We have, have 160,000 to take it down. So we lose that if we don't make our deadline of December 31st. So um, you heard what has to happen. Permits, C or CG, not you would be saying a Duke, you know, and then the actual work. So. Right, the building superstructure and then what yeah. most people don't realize and when you look at a building to demolish, the work is, you know, the building is there to, to keep the folks dry. The work is in the ground. The concrete slab and footings, that's where, you know, the, you know, the real work effort is to get that material out of the ground, to get the site graded. You know, it's going to be raining and snowing right. and sleeting soon. So we've got to get the concrete pulled out of the ground, get the site rough graded, and the, the, the voids that are left when we pull a footing, get that backfilled so we don't have the soil deteriorate for you. Put silt fence up so you don't have runoff from the site, and, and you know we have positive drainage, and then we're gonna get out of your way. Okay. You know that I'm, I'm making it sound simpler than it is, but you know that's a lot to get done in a 60-day period. And you know, it, as I said, Mr. Cameron, you know, expressed the, the need to get done by the end of the year due to the grant, and you know we're we're stand at the ready to do that just so mid-september is already kind of pushing it you're right okay mm -hmm. okay just um, just want everybody to understand that <laughs> yeah. I, I guess one thing and you've done this many times 
before, but we have three great business partners that are right there in that lot. So we want to make sure that, you know, we let the residents know that they'll still be open for business. Mm -hmm. You can still get Duncan, you can still go to Wild Mike's, and you can still drive through Arby's, right? Absolutely, without question. Good point. And Good. we understand we're visitors here, and that's their home, that's where they make their living. We are not going to, uh, there's not going to be dirt drug onto your streets. Our housekeeping is the most important thing besides safety of one of our projects. There'll be street sweeper here. If there's one of the things that you have to understand, our equipment won't be down the mud. We stay up on the hard surface. You know, that's our work process. That's an engineering control that we use so we don't create objectionable conditions, you know, because it is going to start raining. It's going to get, you know, muddy and things like that. But, um, you know, I, I'm. I'm president of the company. I'm personally going to guarantee you that it's going to be a clean site. You can call our office if there's any issue. You'll be looking at me in 30 minutes. Thank you so Perfect. much. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. And if I could add, the one thing we didn't touch on is how much they're going to take the building down for. And we had a very competitive bid process where 13 bids came in. So we were fortunate. And uh, Mr. O'Rourke was wanting to do this work because the price of the contract is 234000 We were anticipating 400000 and would feel good about that based on previous pricing, but there was somebody at 237000 as well. So we had some very nice prices, and we, we feel very fortunate and happy. You know, Mike felt like he needed to get this project. And, uh, Welcome home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, as I said, it's a, it's a personal thing, obviously. And, uh, you know, as you all know, I mean, COVID has decimated a lot of industries. The construction industry, I wouldn't say is decimated, but it has slowed. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, sometimes when you're in business, you just take an interest in certain things, and this was one of those times. So right. we're happy to, to do it for you, and, and we were definitely having a sale that day. Right. We're lucky happy to us. Have you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those watching at home, if you haven't seen uh, some of the designs and things that we're looking at, go on our website. Uh, you can see designs, uh, 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 not blueprints, but the schematics. yeah, the schematics yeah. of it. Um, and those of you who live here in the township, you should be excited about this. It's going to really be neat. It's going to be a good thing. So you, uh, I'm sure some are wondering, when do you see the final completion date down the road? I know not, not a hard date, but two years, three years, year and a half. What are you thinking, Jack? I think from what we talked about, and just to be, we have conceptual plans that are boxes that hold so much, right. and they're pretty confident it'll fit what we think. But we're getting into the, the schematic design phase, then there's a design drawing phase and construction drawings. All that, we're, we're hoping by April 1st, we're doing a groundbreaking um, for bringing something out of the ground. We'll do a groundbreaking for some, taking something down. So April 1st, and then I'm not sure, Mike, I'm, I'm going to say 18 months is an aggressive time frame, but what we're hoping. So, you know, by the end of 2022, yeah. that would be if, if things fall into place nicely. Nice. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you for your Thank time. You, Mike. All right. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Okay. Are we in the motion? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Resolution 2020 172, resolution authorizing and entering into an administrative services agreement for medical plan administration with Key Benefits Inc. KBA for the purpose of establishing the terms and conditions under which KBA agrees to, to provide administrative services in connection with the provision certain self-insured group health benefits for eligible township employees and officers, authorizing the township administrator to execute and deliver all necessary documents, declaring an emergency, and dispensing with the second reading. Ooh, that's a lot. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Discussion on this resolution. Melanie. This is one of the components of our self-insurance plan. It's the TPA. They're the ones that um, set the plan, set the program. Um, and then we'll 
talk about the stop loss in a minute. So um, I am 90% ready to do open enrollment. I'm waiting on a couple um, things from Haran, and then I'll be pushing it out to the employees, hopefully on Monday. Okay. All right. Good. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2021-73, resolution authorizing and entering into the contract providing excess loss insurance with Peru American Fidelity Assurance Company in connection with the provision of group health insurance benefits through an individual self-insurance program for the provision of individual and aggregate stop loss protection, authorizing the township administrator to execute and deliver the necessary documents, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? This is the stop loss component. Um, this means that the township pays for the um, roughly, most, for on most situations, the first $50,000 worth of claims for an individual, anything above and beyond that we pay and the stop loss carrier reimburses. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2020-174, resolution authorizing and in entering a, a renewal agreement with Dental Care Plus for the provision of group dental insurance benefits for eligible township employees and officers, authorizing the township administrator to execute and deliver the necessary documents, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? I like to create resolutions with really long titles, so <laughs> you're welcome. Um, this is Dental Care Plus. We've been with them for several years. Um, the one significant change is now dependents can be on the plan up to 26 years old without uh, qualifications of being in college. This matches our uh, medical and our vision insurance, so it'll make it easier for both uh, myself and the employees um, to administer having the same consistent and also it was a zero increase so the price is the same. Yeah, we like that. Okay. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Thanks, Great. Melanie. Thank you, Melanie. <laughs> Community development, please. Resolution 2020-175, resolution certifying a violation abatement expenses at 3940 Delhi Pike, 4426 Delhi Pike, 5196 Delhi Pike, 5118 Rapid Run Road, 5108 Rapid Run Road, and 5621 Cleves Warsaw Pike to the County Auditor for assessment, declaring an emergency and dispensing for second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Discussion, please, Mr. DeLong. Yeah, as you probably saw on the screen up there, as Mr. Cameron was flipping through there, you can see the before and after photos of all six of these properties. The assessments range from $460.50 to $576. Um, so the total assessment for all six will be $2,969.50 that we'll file with the county auditor, and these will be placed on the property owner's taxes. Okay. Very good. Stuff we don't like to do, but unfortunately we have to do it. So. Right. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. Yes, yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz. Yes. Mrs. Seavey. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2020-176, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 4045 Delhi Pike, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? Yeah, just for the interest of time, I'll just rattle through all of these. Um, this will be resolution 176 through 183. Um, the photos will be up on your screen. They were in the condition, as you see. Some property owners did make some attempts. We are working with the property owner for 183 for the junk motor vehicle. 
they are in the process of getting that removed, but we are still requesting that you declare it. They're aware that we're doing that tonight just for procedure pro or for just for our process and procedures. So, but as I said, um, they're all still in the condition as you see in the photos and we do request you declare them a nuisance. Okay. Very good. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mr. Sturtz? Yes. Mr. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2020 177, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 4294 Clover Hill Terrace, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2020 178, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 4539 Fair Road, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any other discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2020 179, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 4750 Mayhew Avenue, declaring an emergency and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2020-180, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 5347 Plover Lane, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Is there any further discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2020-181, resolution declaring nuisance for accumulated debris at 5143 Mount Vernon Road, declaring emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any other discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2020 182, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation and accumulated debris at 313 at Brook Forest Drive, declaring emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any other discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2020-183, resolution providing for the removal of a junk motor vehicle at 5143 Mount Averna Road, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Discussion, please. Mr. DeLong. Yeah, this is actually the car in the back. It is a little difficult to see. It is a Ford Taurus. The car in the front only had a cracked window. We had some questions about that vehicle also, um, but the back window was cracked, but the tires were all inflated. So the car to the front, does not meet the junk vehicle definition. It's the Taurus that's kind of pushed into the uh, shrubbery that is the junk motor vehicle. Okay. We move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Mr. DeLong, quick question. On that last picture, it's a prime example of something like that. Getting in contact with the homeowner and say that they were going through some hardship cases, where would you recommend them to go if they don't have the money, they can't get it out themselves, or they're 
uh, elderly or wh what do you do with that? You know, a lot of times we'll look to our fire department for the cares to assist them. Um, and we also look for people if based on their income levels, we don't know, we don't ask those questions, right. but we will also forward people to legal aid for assistance. Um, the CARES team has probably been our best um, avenue for us because they have a lot of resources with Bobby and her social service uh, background. So churches have been coming in and helping some people with things and things like that. So yeah, yeah it's a good that, partnership we have. I, I think that is something that I think we try to be aware of or more, maybe we should be more aware of that there are some hardship cases, things going on that we don't know. So. And, and again, we can't ask that. <laughs> we right, to... and this is a perfect example too because the property owner, our inspector Nathan Baker, spoke to them, and she's like, "I know, I need to get rid of it." Yeah. She's trying to get a title right now. You know, we'll have a clock ticking, but we're going to work with her um, right. because we don't want to tow it ourselves. It's an expense on us, and it becomes an assessment they're going to have on, on the agenda. So she's in the process of working it with us, and she's been super cooperative, and we really appreciate that. And that's what, yeah. that's what we ask for the public to do is work with us and we work with you yeah. so nice. talk to us yeah. yeah definitely thank you thank you thank you okay i have nobody signed in for public comments tonight last chance forever hold your peace anybody very good um announcements at community events please the Delhi Hist historical society virtual program cincinnati loves getta will be monday september 14th from 7 p.m to 8 p.m food etymologist dan woolert will share the story of cincinnati getta the Dolly Branch Libraries Program, Kids Virtual Homeschool Book Club, The One and Only Ivan by Catherine Applegate, is Wednesday, September 23rd from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., and that's for ages 9 to 12. Curbside pickup of materials and limited capacity reopening are still going on at the library Monday through Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And you can call 639-6019 to schedule pickup of items. Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020, presidential election upcoming deadlines and reminders. October 5th is, a, is the last day to register to vote or update your name and address in person at the Board of Elections, BMV locations, and the Public Library. October 6th is voting early in person, begins at Hamilton County Board of Elections. And now through October 31st, you can request an absentee ballot by mail. You must fill out and submit an absentee application to get your ballot mailed to you. And you can visit votehamiltoncountyohio.gov for voting information. That's all we have. Thank you. Those out there, obviously, continue to fight the, uh, the COVID battle out there. Keep your hands clean, obviously. Keep the social distancing going. And uh, the numbers sometimes look, look better. The hospitalizations are down and the deaths are down from what I last saw. And, and we're out of the red zone here on where we are. So that's always a good thing. Is there any other update on that that you wanted to offer, Jack? Uh, that would be Chief Campbell's area if you wanted to give us a quick COVID update. Thank you. We're at 334 cases. We're looking at 100 and, oh, what the heck? We're at 140 active cases, so about 60% recovered. It's been a steady week. I will say we have added cases every day. Uh, was on the phone with a conference call with uh, Commissioner um, Kesterman and the most recent spike is related to kids going back to college so it's the 18 to 24 age group We've seen a spike the concern there is they like to eat free food and come back home and do laundry so their exposure to other folks that may have underlying conditions or older um, but they're keeping an eye on the spread. He did say we're going to stay at a level two most likely since Thursday. So saw you, a small spike. When you say the 334, are you talking just in the zip code here or Hamilton County? Or what 334 you? cases just in Del High. Okay. Since I think our first case was reported here in March 27th. But 140 so. active and, and again. 140 would be those uh, locations where the fire department response to and they warn us that somebody in the household is tested positive and that we have to wear the proper PPE. Okay. I will I will say um, we've been very fortunate. Um, we haven't transported a lot of COVID positive residents. Um, however, with the acute care facilities in our area, we've had a number of folks that are non-residents that get care in Delhi who we have transported and kind of were told later, hey, this person tested positive. 
So usually one of those things that we're seeing is it's it's typically the non-residents that are calling us for services and stuff, and everybody right. else is staying at home. And I think what we've seen too, at least where I work, a lot of them are asymptomatic. They're not showing any signs of anything, but they take the test and then and the you know the bell goes off, and then and then you have some false positives, and and that's it just becomes kind of or crazy. they don't have the fever, they don't yeah. have the one everything that we've been told about. Maybe it's just a little GI not feeling well. And those are the ones that, you know, we don't let our guard down anymore. I'd like to say, you know, treat everyone as if they have it, have the PPE, we have it available for our personnel, and we ensure that they use it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so keep helping each other out. We're, mm -hmm. again, fighting a good fight. Also, don't forget, uh, the kids are back in school, everybody. There's school zones out there. Watch your speeds, especially up there, Anderson Ferry, Neb Road. Delshire, all that. Uh, be aware. You know, there's kids crossing, and anymore in this generation where everyone's got a cell phone and things and people aren't watching, just be smart, be safe on the roads. Okay? Um, we do have a need for executive session tonight, but uh, we will be back here. Our next trustee meeting is September 30th, 2020. We invite everyone, whoever wants to come and enjoy, watching it on television or those in house. Um, thank you for being here tonight. Motion to retire to executive session to consider economic development matters, to consider the promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee, and to prepare for and reviewing negotiations with bargaining units. So moved. Second. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Very good. We will retire to uh, executive session. Thanks, everyone. Have a great uh, couple weeks till we see you again.